We're super excited to announce the release of Reality Capture version 1.5. Here's a quick run through of some of the exciting new features. We've made some huge optimizations for both speed and the quality of texturing. The increased speeds will be most noticeable on large data sets using more powerful PCs. In this first benchmark with a good PC, see the specs on screen, version 1.4 finished in just over 33 minutes and version 1.5 finished in just over 24 minutes. In this second benchmark with a pretty powerful PC, see specs on screen, version 1.4 finished in just over 18 minutes and version 1.5 finished in just over 9 minutes. We now have a new export to help you make nerfs and Gaussian splats. If you go to Alignment, then Export and Registration, you can now export in JSON format. Here we have my sparse point cloud and here's my reconstruction region. Now, the normal behavior would be to create a watertight mesh, which I have here. And you can see the bottom parts of the box have been filled in, but we have a new option now. If you go to mesh model and then the settings for creating a model and then under mesh calculation here, we have a new setting, remove marginal triangles. Now the default would be to disable it, but if you enable it, then if I mesh that same box there, then I would get this result that you can see right here. Our new defragmenter will give you larger islands on your UV maps. Larger islands means less seams, and less seams means greater performance and less artifacts. Above here, you can see the unwrap for 1.4, and we have loads of little tiny islands here. And below, you can see 1.5 with a lot larger islands. Now, how do we turn it on? If you are texturing your model for the first time, then just go to the texture settings here and you'll find this new section here to defragment charts. The default is set to no, so set it to yes. And if you're unwrapping your model, uh, then you will find defragment charts right here as well. So now we have a new export. If you go to mesh model, export, dense mesh model, uh, you will now have the option to use universal scene description or universal scene description zipped. There is now a 16-bit option when exporting terrain models in PNG format, meaning far greater precision for landscape generation. Past your images can now be relative. You can see here I have a project file open and you can see there is no drive letter here. So the paths are relative. So as long as you keep the same file structure, you can move your folders around and you won't have to relink your images. Now the photo consistency texturing style will also accept 16 bit inputs. Now you have control over how masks are used in your images. You can select your inputs. I've selected all of mine you can see we have this extra section here, image layers, and I can enable or disable masks in alignment, meshing, and texturing. Now texturing is the new one, and you can see in this image here, I've got this line at the bottom here caused by the masks. So if I disable masks for all of the images and then texture again, I get this result here. You can see that those lines are gone because there's no masks used in the texturing. We've added to our CLI commands, now there's a command that will work the same as the start button and also new commands for grouping and ungrouping camera calibrations. We also have lots of new commands for classifying models. So for example, you can import a previously saved classification format, then transfer the labels from your labels layer and now the model is classified with a custom classification. You can then use this classification to color the model. For a full list of new features, please see the link in the description to the release notes. Thank you very much for watching and goodbye.